to say what an honor it is to spend this evening with all of you um, working through uh, what has been, uh, you know, a really, uh, really tragic um, event and something that is not an uncommon story, um, something that's quite familiar to a lot of us. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Miss Rice and Amanda and everyone else who has made it possible um, to put an event like this on, so thank you. Uh, I, <clears throat> I got the opportunity in 2018, last year, to develop a new body of work um, at the Radcliffe Institute at Harvard University, and uh, I was not, uh, you know, a, a good student by traditional senses of the word, and so I found myself at a place like Harvard uh, via a very circuitous route through art making. Uh, and by the time that I got there, instead of being really excited to just jump into the studio and work on a creative practice, I kind of had to suss through the mental and emotional um, uh, mud of what it meant to be invited into an institution that was built on stolen land and built by stolen people. <laughs> so, uh, the work that I started developing there was centered around, well, what would it look like? What would a 400 year plus legacy of an educational institution look like if we designed it ourselves? Uh, so I had this name kicking around in my head titled um, the University of St. Tamir. And I was thinking of sainthood as, as something, you know, uh, how do we canonize a person? How do we officially recognize a life lived and cement their story and, and history within uh, canon. So I started working through these materials and I, when I'm imagining what, um, what a classroom at the University of St. Tamir would look like, uh, I started developing a series called uh, Lessons and these lessons were uh, uh, our chalkboard pieces. Uh, that you see here, um, one side is a pink mirror a uh, pink plexi mirror, and the other side is a uh, neon text piece uh, that reads, uh, we are not our pain. And so I'm thinking of, you know, this piece is titled lesson number one, and I'm thinking of what would be an important lesson to teach on the first day of this course, this class at the University of St. Tamir, and I, I figured, this statement, we are not our pain, of course, I'm, I'm, I'm not denying that uh, so, so many parts of our experience, so many parts of a subjugated experience is trauma and is pain, but I, I'm hoping to open that up and, and, and not have our stories relegated to our suffering, but what does it mean to work through that pain? What does it mean to transform it and uh, work to develop things like the Tamir Rice Afrocentric Cultural Center in moments of pain and struggle that things can bloom quite beautifully. And so the other uh, side of that chalkboard is the you know, rosy pink tint because for us seeing things through uh, a rose tint isn't always blissful, willful ignorance. Um, it's a survival mechanism. Uh, we have to find these spaces of joy. We have to find these spaces of uh, generative movement. Uh, one of the other pieces uh, in, in this work, um, uh, before, I, before I started getting too deep into developing the work, I realized that uh, I couldn't continue if I didn't try at least to get in touch with Miss Rice and ask for her blessing to use Tamir's name uh, to continue on this project. And when we got on the phone and through my research, I, I learned that plans for the Tamir Rice Afrocentric Cultural Center were already underway, and it seemed like the, the way that I could contribute to her efforts, um, the efforts of the foundation, was to make this work and on the scale know that, um, you know, I'm really beginning actually in, in a lot of this art stuff. And so at this point, I'm starting to uh, realize that the access that I have into certain spaces, um, certain art spaces, but particularly spaces like Harvard, where, um, you know, Miss Rice, Rice and Amanda came out to see the work in progress. We met with students, we met with faculty. And so if I'm thinking about the work that I can do in the studio, manifesting my ideas via materials, 
schools, um, but also how to work laterally and extend my points of access into these places that have barred me and barred us for centuries from entering now um, are allowing us to come in and work and, and on the surface it's like, oh, well, everything's great, right? Because there are four of you in the room now so we can like uh, everything, every, all that other stuff, sorry about that, but uh, here you go, here's opportunity. Um, doesn't quite sit well uh, for me and with me. Um, so this is my way, it's just one way of, of, of figuring out how to navigate these spaces but also bring, uh, bring a whole team along with me. Um, <clears throat> I asked Miss Rice if she wanted to uh, offer some, some words and collaborate on one of the pieces. So the, the brown wall piece directly in the back is actually a desk from when Harvard uh, was a, uh, you know, men's only college and Radcliffe was the women's college. Women weren't actually admitted until 1975, which is not that long ago. And so in thinking about the history of these places, uh, this wood is from that time where uh, this institution, um, you know, didn't even allow women to sit in the classrooms. And so uh, I, I am thinking about all of the lessons that I've learned over the course of my life and they happen to be within spaces of school and institutions. I've been a student for more, more years than not. So when I think about knowledge acquisition and what we learn about ourselves and how we come to know who we are and our relationships to other people, some of these lessons at this point in my life are no longer holding up. So uh, in order for me to unlearn some of these things, I'm, I'm, I'm working through certain ideas to, uh, to fill those spaces. And um, I'd just like to read uh, what that plaque says. So in the installation, you can stand against the wall and look down and uh, look up at the installation and then read this. In loving remembrance of my son, Tamir Rice, a sacrifice for change and guiding light for reform in the United States, we dedicate this installation to you. Losing you is the hardest thing that I will ever face, but in my pursuit of justice for you, it is an honor to work with artists and activists all over the world to tell your story. I'm humbled to share in EJ, EJ Hill's vision for the University of St. Tamir, a space to remember you and what state-sanctioned violence did to our family and many other black and brown communities across the nation. The struggle against police terror continues. <clears throat> Thanks. We are more than just the struggles that our stories get centered on. And again, I really want to thank Ms. Rice and all of you uh, for being here tonight and sharing this evening. Uh, thanks again. Um, now, I'd like to uh, introduce Amanda D. King, uh, the organizer of this event um, and consultant for the Tamir Rice Afrocentric Cultural Center. Thank you all, I'll keep it very brief. Um, first of all, I'd like to Thank you all for coming tonight to Art Activism and the Legacy of Tamir Rice here at the Cleveland Museum of Art. <clears throat> I know that it's a cold November day and that people have a lot of things to do and that we're not used to sitting for three hours and learning about anything. Um, and so I'm grateful to you for that. But we also need to remember that Tamir was murdered on November 22nd, another cold day. And we are in the luxury of a museum space right now. And there have been boots on the ground in these streets for five years trying to seek justice for Tamir. So we can hold on a little longer, don't you think? Um, I'd like to thank Ms. Rice and the Rice family, um, Tajay, Tavon, and Tashiana for sharing your brother with us. I I 
have the honor to have somewhat of an insider's point of view from working with Ms. Rice, but I cannot imagine what it feels like to have your brother go from your best friend to an icon that you can't touch, you can't feel, that you have to see and equate with trauma every time that you look at him. So I am deferential to you and sending love your way as you approach the 22nd. You know, this was a beautiful and inspiring evening, but uh, the fifth anniversary is going to be difficult for many people, uh, especially the family. Uncle Mike and anybody else a part of the Rice family here tonight, thank you. The mothers of the movement for coming. This is your second time coming to Cleveland Museum of Art and supporting Miss Rice and loving on her. And I know that when me and Miss Rice have our fights, uh, she probably call y'all and say, Amanda, she's something else. <laughs> um, I'd like to thank Deaster Gates, uh, Mallory, Sabina, and the Rebuild Foundation for making this possible. Um, the Tamia Rice Foundation uh, has a tremendous vision and desire to bring Tamir's legacy forward, but there are bureaucratic and systemic barriers that we have right now, and uh, the Rebuild Foundation stepped up and has been a container for this event and some of the, fun, fun, some of the funds raised for tonight. Um, I'd like to thank all of the participants. I won't call them by name. They're on your program, and of course they spoke to you tonight, but I want to thank you all from the bottom of your heart for coming all the way to Cleveland to have this important conversation about the intersections of art and activism in a city that um, has tremendous potential, a $9.1 billion creative economy, but um, we need to consider what exactly it will take to make this creative economy transformative. I'd like to thank Kelsey Carter, the impact director of Shooting Without Bullets and the producer for tonight's evening. We were literally a two woman show and it was not easy to put this on. And I am a visionary, yes, but I am not very good at logistics sometimes. So I'm thankful for her. And uh, you know, uh, this is about um, the Tamir Rice Foundation and Ms. Rice um, gave me one of the greatest gifts of all, which was allowing Tajay Rice to be in Shooting Without Bullets. Um, we were just a new program and no one knew what it was, not even Ms. Rice, but she trusted us enough to, um, to lend her daughter's voice to young people um, who are thinking about their communities and who are seeking to shift policy, culture, and perspective through the use of the camera and through hip hop performance. And just bringing Tajay into that group has been a blessing because it centers our young people. And I know that her best friend Jasmine, who is in Shooting Without Bullets, loves her to death. And that relationship would not have been possible um, without Miss Rice's trust. I'd like to thank all of the interns and volunteers who came out tonight, as well as the Cleveland Museum of Art staff. Justin, today we've raised over $50,000 in pledges. to continue Tamir's legacy and to create a path forward for racial equity in Tamir's name, specifically in efforts to try and bring the gazebo back to Cleveland, its rightful place, and the place where this gazebo means the most, and a place that we need to center ourselves and really think about how we are going to move forward um, in 2019 and beyond. And our IOB campaign um, also has received over $17,000 worth of donations. But for as many lives have, who have been terrorized by state-sanctioned violence here in Cleveland, and for as many young people who um, have to face poverty each and every day in this city, we have the number one child poverty rate in the country. Um, they're, more th they're worth more than that. We have to invest more than that. And so um, I'd like for you all to take out your cell phones and go to our IOB page. If you donate literally $15 tonight, we will, get our, we will be much closer to our goal in helping um, move forward with the building of the Tamir Rice Afrocentric Cultural Center. 
the link for that is, uh, come on, take out your phones. Look, I've been working all day. You can, you can do this one thing. <laughs> um, it's tinyurl.com. Come on, I, I, I mean, I could wait longer. Um, and it's Tamir's IOB. And if, if you guys are, are like having trouble on your phones, you can go outside and take a picture of the signs out there, or there's four interns out there with their laptops ready to go, so there is no excuse. Um, but if you give $15 today, if each of us did, we'd be closer to our goal. And there's also literature on the table about giving for the Tamir Rice Legacy Fund managed by the Cleveland Foundation. That is the end. This is the end of tonight, but this is the beginning of um, a movement forward in the arts community, in the activism community, and in the education sector to really center the lives of black and brown youth, like the young folks who I photographed here on the screen, because their lives truly, truly do matter. And they are shaping, they're shaping the moral compass of the United States of America because they're, when we stopped talking about Tamir, these, these young students were writing reports on him. They were um, you know, using hashtags for us to remember him. And um, it is because of them that we do this work. And if you truly love young people, and if you truly want to uh, continue to support then I would encourage you to give to our IOB. Thank you so much for coming out tonight, and may, may God bless you. Mothers and participants, please go back to the green room. Have a great night.